Well, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday we had the huge announcement that the Chicago Bears plan to build a $4.6 billion stadium development, including around a $3 billion domed stadium, the surrounding area, and Soldier Field getting turned into a community park. But where does that leave us with the Chicago White Sox? You know, over the last few weeks, maybe month, there's been the inclination that maybe the Chicago White Sox, if the right, or I guess the wrong circumstances happen, they could potentially relocate. You can see White Sox not included in Bears financing plans for new stadium. Here's why that matters. And yes, so originally going into the Bears stadium announcement, my biggest question was, how much is it going to cost? How much are the taxpayers going to be paying for it? Apparently, the Bears are planning to ask for around $300 million from the NFL. The taxpayers might be on the hook for around $1.2 billion. You can see Kevin Warren saying, no, the plan doesn't include any money for what they want, meaning the White Sox Stadium, but it doesn't mean that money does not exist if they want, so that's why we're continuing conversations. In early April, the city of Chicago rejected part of a financial proposal for the Bears and the White Sox for their respective stadiums, and that's why the Bears are going at it alone now without the White Sox, and it's very interesting to see this develop because there's already the Cubs in Chicago. The White Sox are terrible right now. They've got a very unpopular ownership and their lease is expiring in six years. They are not at a good location. It's a crime-ridden area, guaranteed right field. The ballpark itself is routinely ranked in the bottom five to bottom 10 of MLB stadiums. And now on top of this, if you want to ask for public money, you're competing with a more popular team in a more popular sport, the Chicago Bears and the NFL, they're going to be getting taxpayer money, you would think, before the White Sox, considering the White Sox are the second team in the Chicago market. So there's a lot going on that's against the White Sox right now. Of course, this can all be solved very easily if the White Sox ownership commits to fully or mostly privately fund their potential new stadium. It looks great. The parcel where they're potentially going to be building it is beautiful. And I do think when it comes to MLB baseball, having two teams in Chicago, it makes sense. It can work. It's a big enough market. We've seen the White Sox draw 25, 30,000 per game in a bad location before at guaranteed rate field. There's no reason they should be relocating, but you've got a terrible team right now, and you've got kind of an unfortunate thing where the Bears are going to be asking for public money, and they're not including you in on this deal. So the Bears could possibly be getting $1.2 billion in public money. Where does that leave the White Sox? Do the White Sox circle back and in a year say, oh, it's our turn to get the money? I think fans wouldn't be very receptive to something like that. Why would the Bears get the better look? Well, it is obvious when you talk about the NFL versus a second market MLB team. The name of the game in stadium economics is outside dollars. The ability to draw dollars from outside the city and state is how the local economy would benefit from a stadium project. In the Bears case, that's more feasible as they plan to have a large capacity with year-round access via their translucent dome, able to host several outside events, not including Bears games. Obviously, they're talking about various things like concerts in the fall and the winter, possibly hosting a Super Bowl, hosting a Final Four because it is fully enclosed and it's got a high capacity, all of that. It's obvious why the tax money would go to the Bears instead of the White Sox. And you also do have this report. White Sox owner Jerry Reinsdorf offers own money to help finance the proposed ballpark in the South Loop. That also came out yesterday. So not only did we have the Bears new renderings, we've got White Sox ownership saying, we're actually going to partially pay for it now. It's not going to be fully taxpayer. So the ballpark itself, I think, is around $1.4 to $1.5 billion. But of course, they're going to want a stadium district. They've got a lot of land, and it's going to be a lot more than that. The question is, how much is the public going to pay for it? While the Bears and White Sox are pursuing separate means to finance new stadiums, they've often been tied together by city and state officials in discussions about stadium funding. And they both want new stadiums, so it does make sense. 
Moving to the bottom of the article, you can see it says, however, a Chicago Tribune report Tuesday revealed the Bears would ask for $2.3 billion in public financing. Now, I've heard a few different figures. That Tuesday number, it came out before the renderings were released, before they did their big live stream and I think the number is about $1.2 billion they want in public money, which is still a lot, you know, over a billion dollars. It's not the gaudy 2.3 where it's 50-50. They're trying to get the money via different avenues from the NFL, other sources, and then obviously they do have the private commitment of around $2.3 billion, the entire project being around 4.6 to 4.7. Bears, White Sox ramp up new stadium plans White Sox ownership could invest upwards of $200 million. I don't think that's going to be enough. We'll see. I mean, how much are they going to ask for from the public if the public is already paying $1.2 billion for the Bears' new stadium? We can understand with the lease coming up for the White Sox, this is going to be a problem. And this is only going to be resolved, I would say, by White Sox ownership ponying up and paying more for this development rather than taxpayer money paying for this because it would be a tough pill to swallow if you are Chicago and you're seeing in other places public taxes that are going for stadiums. They're all getting voted down. Imagine you have to pay for two new stadiums, especially with the White Sox. I don't think that would fly. So could the White Sox via collateral damage be forced, well not forced, I mean their ownership can't afford this and, and they could pay for it, but if their ownership is saying we're not going to be paying for the entire thing, we don't think it's a worthy investment, we're not going to recoup our money quick enough, could they just say we're going to move, we're going to go somewhere else by 2029 and that's where the rumors start with a place like Nashville, although would Nashville, you know, in terms of a timeline, they would need to build their own ballpark and MLB stadium it kind of gets a little weird. I, I guess really any team would. It's not like there's just MLB stadiums laying around. I'm so used to recently with all the NHL relocation and expansion, many cities have arenas ready to go for NHL teams. That's not how it works with MLB baseball. Basically every city getting an expansion team or a relocation team would have to build a brand new stadium. Sure, you could play at a minor league stadium for a year or two, but that logistically, it, it just doesn't work long term. So when it comes to this White Sox situation, I do think we're getting to the point where we need to sound the alarm bells depending on how much or how little the White Sox ownership wants to pay. Because remember, there were rumors before the renderings of the new White Sox stadium that they were meeting with officials in Nashville during the winter meetings about potentially relocating. That wouldn't come until you would expect the lease to be up. But this is something to watch develop and, and maybe the White Sox can turn it around. Certainly, I think in a perfect world for MLB, this development gets built. There, there can be two teams in Chicago. They can both average thirty to 35,000 in terms of total attendance. Now, apparently the capacity of that stadium is going to be what is it, 37 or 38K, I believe? It might only be 35, but it's going to be smaller. That's how they're building the new MLB stadiums, a lot lower in terms of capacity. I'm not a real big fan of it because it just doesn't look like an MLB stadium. It looks kind of like a hybrid minor league you know, stadium on steroids. It, I guess it's just going to take some getting used to when it comes to smaller stadiums. But I think in terms of, if you compare the White Sox and the Rays, I think the White Sox are far better in terms of existing and not relocating than the Rays. The Rays, to me, have extremely little demand. There's very little demand for baseball overall in the state of Florida, but they're the ones that are possibly going to be getting a new stadium, and the White Sox, because a combination of factors, the Bears' public money, the team is terrible right now, the stadium's in a horrible location, the ownership isn't willing to pay for it fully privately, we're getting kind of a culmination of a lot of things coming together that sounds very, very bad for the Chicago White Sox. This can all be remedied if there's a bigger investment of private money or maybe the taxpayers, the citizens say, yeah, we're going to pay for both the Bears and the White Sox stadiums. I don't think that's how it's going to work though. I'm guessing there will be some sort of agreement to partially publicly fund the Bears stadium. I don't know if it's going to be $1.2 billion in public money, but it's going to be a lot. And then the White Sox are going to be like, don't forget about us. And people are not going to have any appetite to fund another stadium, especially a stadium that's not going to be able to host really any other events. I guess MLB stadiums can host concerts and things like that. 
but you've already got Wrigley. You already have this massive new super stadium that's going to be hosting a ton year round. It makes way more sense to put an investment into that than a potential White Sox stadium that's going to get very little use outside of hosting the Chicago White Sox. It's open air. It can't be used during the winter. There are a number of problems if the White Sox do not ramp up and really offer more money for this new stadium. Maybe there's a potential investor that comes in that helps the White Sox. I did hear there was an investor that was potentially going to help them. But right now, this is a very interesting situation to follow. The Bears possibly hurting the White Sox. Originally, they wanted to go at it together. It didn't work. It got rejected. Now the Bears going at it alone. And it's looking. There are different figures. Some people saying it's going to cost the public $2.3 billion. Others saying it's $1.2 billion. The total project 4.7 and we know that 2.3 will be privately financed. If it Whether it's 1.2 or 2.3, I'm guessing it's 1.2. 2.3 would be a crazy ask. I guess it is Chicago. It's a bigger population center. Maybe they can get that done. But either way, the Bears stadium is happening one way or another. Worst case scenario, they have to go back to Arlington Heights. But it's coming within the next, I would say, five or six years. They laid out the timeline and they said they wanted this thing opened by 2028. And they want to start construction next summer. So they want this thing up and moving And it could hinder the White Sox if the Bears get public money before the White Sox. And then if the White Sox ask for a ton of public money, that's another problem. It's a double whammy because the public is not going to have an appetite to pay for a second stadium. So we will see what ends up happening. But either way, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.